use the regular formula tool in Alteryx. It processes each record independently. It starts with the first record. It looks at all of the expressions that you may have written that use different fields or create new fields across that, and it processes it for that first record. Then it moves on to the next record, and it processes that record. This is great, it's very efficient. But the problem is, is that if you want to reference any information that is not contained in that one record, you're just out of luck. But there is a tool in Alteryx that allows you to actually pull in pieces of information that are present in rows that came before the current one being evaluated, or that actually come after the current row being evaluated. That tool is the multi-row formula tool. And we're gonna take a look at how powerful this tool is and how you can use it to be able to expand the kinds of formulas that you can achieve in Alteryx. So we, here we have a pretty typical Excel file, right? We've got some header information up here. Our actual data is in this table here. We can see that we've got some um, subheaders going on where we have an actual estimate, a planned, and an actual here, right? And the months are going across here. Our main issue that we're going to try to solve first when we read this data file in is the fact that we have these headers right here that are describing the categories of all of the rows that come below it. So we have incentive travel, then a whole bunch of different cost categories. Then we have professional services header, and then underneath that, different types of professional service cost departments. So when we import this into Alteryx, we are going to want to take these category headers and make a new column that has all of these labels attached to every single row that belongs in that category, right? So we'll want a subcategory column, which is going to contain marketing department, promotions, selling. But then we're going to want the overall category label down this side that says incentive travel for every single one of these categories, and then professional services for every one of these categories. And this is important because you can see some of these departments actually have subcategories within different categories. So we can't just assume that marketing department is in professional services because because marketing department has professional services costs and incentive travel costs and internal fleet costs and so on. So how do we do this? So within Alteryx, we're just going to bring our multiple files that we're trying to bring in and we're going to merge together, but we're going to do something special here. We are going to start our import on line nine, so that will skip all of that header stuff. And then once we bring it together, we can union all our data and we see we've got these header columns and they've come in in the correct column that we expected on top of all of our subcategories. But we need to figure out how to, how to dynamically pull this tag over to a new column and copy it down until we reach the next column header. So we see that we can't just use a regular formula tool where we say, you know, if this one, if our account number is null, then use this value, right? That would identify our header rows and it would populate a new column with this value. But then when we would get to those category rows, subcategory rows that actually contain data, that kind of formula wouldn't work because it would say, well, this isn't a header row, so I'm not going to put anything here. And it would just leave the rest of these null. In fact, we can test this. So this is a great way for us to identify our categories. So we're going to do category and we are going to say if our account number, right? If this F1 field, which is our account number is null. So we can just use is null and we're going to bring in F1. That's what it's called right now. Then we can take the procurement costs value because we know that every time there's no account number, that's actually a header right? Because since it's not actually a row of data, it doesn't have an account number because it's not representing, you know, costs for that, that subcategory or department. When it's not a header column, that means that um, it can just be null, right? We don't want to be pulling that information over because those are the names of the subcategories or department. So we're going to say else um, null, and then we just have to end if. All right, so we can go ahead and run this. And we see in our new column, right, we've correctly identified the categories here, right? But all of the ones that are actually data are just null until we get to that next category. So we are able to call out those category headers for each 
of um, the categories, but we don't know how to copy it down because we need to be able to reference information that is contained in the previous row in order to do this. Well, we talked about that the tool we actually need here is our multi-row formula tool. So let's head over to preparation and we are going to go to multi-row formula tool. We're going to drag that here. So we're actually going to take something that's similar to this, right? We, we know that this is how we're going to identify our, our category headers, right, in the original data. But instead of if it's null, we're going to do something else. We're going to say otherwise, if it's not a header row, then what we want to do is actually pull in the information from the row above. So how do we do that? Well, as we've dropped our multi-row formula tool on, we can see that instead of in our regular formula tool where we just have a drop down of the fields that are available to us, here, we actually have all of the rows that are currently available in our current row or active row. But then you'll see that we also have these options for row minus one and row plus one. That means the rows one after our active row or one before our active row. And in fact, we could actually increase the range that we could call by updating this number rows option. If I make this 12, it means that I actually, it means that I can actually see back 12 rows and forward 12 rows. So you can make this whatever number you need in order to um, get to whatever rows before or after your current row that you need. We also see that we have the option of updating an existing field or creating a new field. So we are going to create a new field. This is the category field, right? And we're gonna create that new field. If you wanted to update an existing field, you could just select that radio dot. It works a lot like the regular formula tool and update in an existing field, except that it can reference information before or after. Then we obviously want to set the type of our field, just like we do in our regular formula tool. So in this case, we're gonna make it a string because we are creating a label and we'll make it 20 characters. I think that's longer than any of our titles. We're going to come back to this values for rows that don't exist after we do a little bit deeper dive into how our multi-row formula tool is working. So let's just take a look at what's happening here. So what we're going to do is instead of just saying null, if it's not a header row, we want to say pull information from the row above. So we're going to head to that row minus one. And we are actually going to use the field that we've just created, which is category. So we see this at the very bottom of our list here. And so we're going to say then read in the value that has been entered in the row before. So let's run this and take a look at what's happening. So we can see that we've now correctly, unlike our other version, pulled in and identified that category header and then pasted it down. And then when we've gotten to a new category, it's changed, right, from the previous header to a new header. And so on, all the way down um, for every row of data that we need. So let's take a look at exactly how this multi-row formula tool works. So we've written our formula, right, that if this account number is empty, then we're going to take this value. Otherwise, we're going to want to read from the the row above in that new field that we're creating. What we can see is as we assess this on the very first row, right? This is our current row. It's saying, is this null? The answer is yes. So since it's null, we are going to create internal travel here, right like this, and pull over this value into our new formula. So now we can move on to our next row here, right? So in our next row, we see that this is not null right? So it's not null here. So therefore we have to go to our else option. So since this is not null, we're going to go back to the row minus one, right? That row just above. We go up that one row. And as we go up that one row, right, we're going to then read this value and we're going to copy it down, right? We read this value and we're going to copy that down because we've gone Row minus one, that says internal travel, and that's what we're going to enter here. 
since that is what our else statement here is asking us to do. And we can continue that all the way down until we hit a new current row where this null value exists. And then it's going to stop pasting from the previous row and it's going to use the new value from procurement costs. And that is how we can dynamically and automatically pull over the correct category header. You can see now how powerful the multi-row formula tool really can be in terms of referencing that information um, that's outside that current row. And you can use the multi-row formula tool for things like um, if you've got monthly data in order, you can do a same month previous year comparison by using the number of rows 12, right? So you could say, look at the current row and then subtract that from the same value 12 rows back and I'm going to now have a difference between that same month one year ago. So there's lots and lots of ways you can use the multi-row formula tool. The last part that you need to consider about that multi-row formula tool is how you want the tool to behave when it tries to reference a value that doesn't exist. So this happens, right, if you say look back one row and it's on the first row. So in our instance, this never happened because we said if it's null, then use the, that current value on that current row. And our first row was automatically null because it was always a header row to start with. But you could imagine writing a formula where you're asking it, for example, our same month previous year calculation. For those first 11 months, it's going to look back and it's not going to see a minus one row or a minus two row or a minus three row. There's just not going to be a row there, right? So if we were on this value here and it tried to look back one row, it's at the top row. There's no previous row to this current row. So you need to tell Alteryx how to replace that missing value. So your options are null, which means truly missing, zero if it's a number, or empty if it's a string, or our third option is set values to closest valid row. So what are the differences here? Null will make that value missing and therefore it will null out any formula or function that is calling that value, right? Because it can't, for example, take an average of a null or multiply null times a number. If you multiply null times five, you get null. It can't, it can't calculate that for you. If you set it to zero in a mathematical function, it's going to replace that particular um, column that you've called, that particular value, with zero. And it will use zero in that calculation. So if you had row minus one plus five as your calculation, it would replace that row minus one with zero and then add five. So you would get five. Set values of closest valid row means that it's going to look back one row. If it doesn't find anything, it's going to come one row down and see if it can find something. So if it looks back one and can't, it's going to use the value of the current row. Let's say it looks back three rows and it can't find three rows back. It's going to check two rows back. If it can find something, it'll use that value. If it can't find anything two rows back, it'll check one row back and use that value. If it can't find anything, it will then use the um, current row. So it keeps going until it can find a valid value and then it inserts that value into the um, function or formula. So now that you understand how, how to use the multi-row formula tool, I'm sure you're going to find many ways that you can harness that power to create relational calculations um, across your database.